Um, I want to introduce uh, Abhi uh, Chada. He's a sophomore studying finance and, and government. Welcome. Good evening, Director Comey. Hello. In your experience with the Trump administration, what did you feel was the attitude of the administration towards established government institutions such as the FBI? Did you feel that, did they feel that these institutions were antagonistic towards the goals of the administration, or was there some level of willingness to cooperate in your experience? In my experience, and, and so it's both the five months I worked under President Trump and since, they view the institutions of justice with contempt as just another piece on the board. When that piece is doing something that the leadership doesn't like, it should be knocked over and dirtied up. And that is a terrible place for us to be as a country. The FBI is not politicized. That's nonsense. The FBI, though, is being politically attacked. And the reason that is so dangerous and so stupid, even if you're a Republican, we need those institutions. All of us need those institutions. And there's a reason that Lady Justice wears a blindfold. So she's not peeking out to see what President this or President that thinks about her decisions. Without that, without that blindfold, one of the major pillars of this democracy is lost, and that is, should be deeply worrying to all of us, including Republicans in Congress who know better. It's not just the FBI, though, as an institution which is under attack. You have confidence in the strength of, of the institutions. I've, I've had uh, um, uh, former uh, well, General Michael Hayden on my program a lot, and he's talked about the, the thin veneer of civilization and how thin that veneer actually is. We like to think it's very deep and, and solid and everlasting. Uh, he uses the example of Sarajevo, a multicultural uh, city, which uh, was, was, you know, for a laid siege to for, for years. Um, what gives you the belief that the institutions are strong enough? Because I know them, and because I know no president serves long enough to destroy the culture that is at the root of them. I hear this term, deep state, all the time, and I, there's no deep state, but there is a deep culture and a commitment to the rule of law, equal protection of the laws, the fundamental values that are at the core of our Constitution that runs really deep in the FBI, the Justice Department as a whole, the intelligence community, the United States military services. It is the ballast that gives me comfort, and I hope should give all Americans comfort, but that can be damaged in significant ways. I don't think any president serves long enough to destroy that, to flip that ship over, but if we are silent, tremendous damage will be done that will take us time to recover from. You said there's no deep state, but you talk about a deep culture. It doesn't sound that much different. I mean, a deep culture which, you know, has ways of doing things and believes it is the right way of doing things, isn't that some of what President Trump was elected to shake up? Absolutely not. I'm talking about a culture of commitment to the rule of law and to the values enshrined in our Constitution. That's the value at the heart of the United States military and the intelligence community and the law enforcement community. No one, I hope, voted for him with the idea that he would destroy those values. And so that's what I mean by a deep culture. It's a culture that we should celebrate and the rest of us who are not part of it ought to make sure we call it out when we see it threatened and damaged. So when some say the deep state is trying to destroy President Trump, you're saying point blank that's not true? That's nonsense.